morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Leveraging the Art of Vocal Variety. Peter Jews, my name, public speaking trainer and coach, and my passion is helping you find your voice so you can confidently and effectively make a difference every time you stand up and speak. What you've got to say matters, and if I can help you in any way, let me know. Leveraging the art of your voice, your vocal variety. As usual, please ask questions, chat, take notes, apply to your own personal circumstances. Do you have good vocal variety? Are there any tips I'm going to share with you that you might change or include to make your vocal variety more impactful, more interesting. So what is vocal variety? Vocal variety is your voice and how it can change and how it can change and adapt and create more engagement, more interest, more impact with your audience. The reverse of vocal variety would be monotone speaking at the same pace all the time, no rise and fall, maybe a nasal quality, and often quite a boring voice. Which happens to be my default, my natural speaking voice. I've always had a boring nasal voice. I don't have a radio quality voice. I don't have a radio announcer's voice. But vocal variety is something that we can learn and we can put into our voice to make more interest, more engagement, more connection with our audience. So why is it important? As well as nonverbal communication having great impact, so does your vocal variety. Most of us have seen this chart. Uh, the words we say, the content I'm sharing with you today, roughly around 10% of my influence. Around half of my influence is in my nonverbal communication. This is my, my presence, my gestures, my eye contact, my facial expressions. Definitely harder via Zoom than face-to-face. -face. And the third your voice. This is why vocal variety, this is why vocal quality matters. Because our voice can portray intrigue, passion, enthusiasm, perplexity. It has all these powers. So let me share with you some strategies to increase your vocal variety. But let's, how do we prepare our voice? Because one of the mistakes that people make is we go straight on stage, we start speaking, and we expect our voice to perform beautifully. So how do you prepare your voice? And I'll get some help from the horse a little bit later on. First of all, do drink water. Drink water before your presentation, have sips of water during the presentation. The one caution is don't drink so much, especially if you've got a 60 minute presentation that you find yourself needing to go to the toilet. But do drink water, so hydration should occur two hours before your presentation. And then sip water as you go. Warm up your voice. Creation of voice, of speech, is one of the most complex processes that we do, according to speech pathologists. So the sinews, the vocal folds, the nerves, the brain thinking, the lungs breathing, all of these have to come into synchronicity to create the words that we want to say. So why would you go on stage and speak without warming up? If you're going to the gym, if you were jogging, you'd probably stretch, warm up before starting to exercise. Otherwise, you might pull a muscle, pull a hamstring. 
So we can warm up by doing tongue twisters. She sells seashells by the seashore. Round the ragged rocks, the ragged rascal ran. You can hum. Just the act of mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to hum for you, warms up your vocal apparatus. And of course, the one that I have last and the horse is indeed horse blows. And they go a little bit like this. Horse blows are when your lips vibrate up and down rapidly. Uh, makes your jaws, your lips, your tongue really relaxed. Uh, don't do horse blows in front of your audience. This is something you do before you prepare. So before I went on this webinar, did I warm up? Yes. Did I drink water? Yes. Opera singers warm up before they go on stage. Your nightly news readers abc channel 10 channel 7 channel 9 news readers they warm up their vocal apparatus before they go live on tv and articulate and speak with those radio or tv quality voices so please don't think you're just going to go on stage and speak don't think you're just going to go to that workshop workshop and open your mouth and expect it to be effective so what can we do? The pace. We can slow down the rate at which we speak. Or if there's a sense of urgency, we can speak a little bit quicker. And by changing pace, depending on where you are within your presentation, building up to a crescendo, or just going through some key learnings, or maybe checking in with everyone in the room, your pace can help echo and create the scene for what you're trying to cover. Fast pace, sense of urgency. A slow pace, more relaxed. Allow people to think and contemplate what you just said. Do you know what your default pace is? When I run my workshops, there's always one person in the room who is a rapid speaker and they speak fairly quickly all the time and they're a fast speaker. The skill for them is learning the ability to slow down when they need to. And there's those people who default speak really slowly and the ability to pick up the pace at some stage will also work well for them. So knowing your default pace, am I seen as an average speaker? That's great, that's your default. Then you can speed up or slow down for impact. But if you're always fast, then for you being able to slow down becomes a key skill to learn. The volume is very important. We can raise the volume, and we can soften the volume. Some people have a rather quiet voice. And I find them hard to hear when they're at the back of the room. The skill for them is the ability to increase their volume. Here's a little trick that I learned. If you have a naturally booming, loud voice, one of the things that you can do to create suspense is to soften your voice. Oh, hang on. This person's been speaking loud and booming all the time and they've just softened their voice. If you're a, a naturally quiet voice speaker and in a big room you may need a, a microphone, a lapel microphone or a handheld microphone and you tend to speak softly most of the time, that increase in volume will once again catch people's attention. So the ability to know, am I a quiet speaker? Am I an average volume speaker? Or am I a loud, booming voice speaker? And being able to modulate that volume up or down. And of course, the 
whisper. A whisper can be really, really powerful. I use the whisper to bring people back when they're doing some brainstorming or they're doing some group work. I will say, now, now if I can have, now if I can have everyone back to the front, please, we'll move on to the next step. And people will stop talking and they'll say, hang on, Peter's saying something, but I can't quite hear what he's saying. Shh, shh, keep quiet. And then the room will gradually quiet and they'll face the front and then I can move to my normal volume. What do most people do? They shout louder. Hello, everyone. Come back. Can I have your back? And what does the room do? The room goes louder. So I go louder. Come on, come on. Can I have your back? And the room goes louder. And you can see eventually I'd, they just go so loud and I don't get people back or it's harder to get people back. And then you get the ding, 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 ding or, or the clapping of the hands. The whisper is a great way to bring your crowd back. The pitch, the rise and fall, the intonation, the music within your voice. So even if you're a soft speaker but you're monotone or a relatively loud speaker and you're monotone, you still need to try and have some pitch. This is the rise and the fall that we have within our voice. If it stays at the same pitch, then it can, became, can become monotonous. And finally, the pause. This is a vocal variety aspect. This is your voice. When you pause, you can have great impact. When you are silent, it allows people to think. The pause can be the punctuation, the full stop, the comma that you would put in your written work. The pause is the punctuation in your spoken words. You can pause for impact. One way we do this is, it's called the pre-pause. Now listen very carefully, I'm only going to say this once. See how that's elevating the importance, elevating the impact of whatever I say next. That's called the pre-pause. The other thing is the post-pause. So does that make sense? You leave people time, you leave people space to cognitively process what you have just said. The mistake, people say something profound and then as I'm trying to process it, the trainer keeps speaking. If you've ever seen comedians, either a live performance or maybe on TV, when they get the audience laughing, so there's this huge laughter within the room, you notice how they don't keep talking? You notice how they just stop, pause, and let the laughter run. That is the post-pause, and it allows the audience to fully laugh and enjoy the moment. In a public speaking perspective, when you say something profound, pause, let people process it. Give them space to process what, process what you've just said. The other thing I sometimes see is people say to me when I'm a participant, I want you to just imagine for a moment that you were, and I start to imagine, and as I'm starting to imagine, they keep talking. When you get people to imagine or go into their mind, give them some space. This is the post-pause. So there's my tips for Vocal variety. What is vocal variety? The range, the change of voice. It's important because it's around about a third of our ability to impact our audiences. Change the pace. 
change the volume and the pitch. And don't be afraid to use silence, also known as the pause. I mentioned that my natural speaking voice is quite monotone, quite nasal. Any vocal variety that I generate comes from using these tools. Increasing the volume sometimes, softening occasionally. And that sense of urgency really speaking up. And of course, the power of the pause. Which one of those tools is going to help you most in generating your vocal variety? So you have that interesting, that voice that says, I need to hear more. Upcoming workshops in Perth, 29th of May, Thriving at Work, sorry, 28th of May, Thriving at Work, 29th, Winning Presentation Skills, 31st of May, Thinking and Speaking Off the Cuff, spaces in all of those workshops. Port Hedland in June, full range of workshops, 24th, 25th, 26th and 27th of June. Next webinar, for those of you who are webinar junkies and want to learn more, six strategies to become a more natural public speaker, rather than an artificial, mechanical, going through the motions public speaker, almost robotic, that we sometimes see. Six strategies to become a more natural public speaker. There's my contact information. If you have any questions, you want to ring me, send me an email, I'll be happy to hear from you. Any topics you would like to hear from me about, my webinars are designed to serve you to solve your issues. So remember, your vocal variety matters. What's your default? style. Are you too fast? Are you too slow? Are you monotone? Are you a soft speaker? Are you a loud speaker? Are you comfortable with pause? Vocal variety is one of the tools that can make us an engaging and impactful speaker. And remember, never be afraid to share your message, uh, to share your ideas whenever you get before a group of audience. What you've got to say matters. And my call to action to all of you, go out there and change your world one conversation at a time. Thank you.